Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Diving Squid YouTube channel. This is the first video in my 2D platformer controller series. This video will focus on making the player move left and right and jump. We'll head over to Unity. Start by creating a new 2D sprite object. And I'm going to name this player. I'm going to drag in my player art that I've already made. And I'm going to add a 2D rigid body component set to dynamics so that the player has gravity. And freeze the rotation and the Z axis. And then I'm going to add a 2D box collider component. And I'll adjust the size and offset so that the box collider fits well with my player sprite. Next, we'll head back to the hierarchy and create a 2D sprite object and drag in our ground art. I'll name it ground and I'll position it and scale it so that it looks more like a platform. I'm going to add a 2D box collider component to our ground and head back to our player game object. I'm going to add a new component called player movement and I'll hit new script and create a new C sharp script. I'll open the new script up inside of Visual Studio and start typing. You're going to want to start by creating a new private rigid body 2D and call it RB. A public float called move speed, a public float called jump speed, and a public float called move input. Next I'll create a private bool variable called is on ground and a private transform variable called player pose. And I'll create a public float variable called position radius. We'll also create a public layer mask and call it ground, where we'll assign our ground game object a tag when we go back into the Unity editor. I'll also create a private float called airtime count, a private float called airtime, and a private bool called in air. I'm going to create a start function and inside this we're going to get our rigid body which is attached to our player using rb equals get component rigid body 2d. Next I'll create our fixed update function and inside this we're going to type move input equals input dot get axis raw horizontal. You could take out the raw bit if you want less responsive movement. And then we're going to set rb dot velocity equal to a new vector 2 and inside this type move input multiplied by move speed and then rb.velocity.y I'm going to create an update function now and inside this I'm going to set is on ground equal to physics 2d dot overlap circle and inside the parentheses I'm going to type player pose dot position and position radius and then our ground tag. Now we're going to get our player jumping. To do this we want to create an if statement stating that if our player is on the ground and the space key is getting pressed then we want our player to jump. To do this, we're going to want to start by setting in air equal to true because our player will be in the air. And we're going to start our airtime counter by doing airtime count minus airtime. Then we're going to set rb.velocity equal to vector to dot up multiplied by jump speed. going to create another if statement and inside type input dot get key key code space and
and if our player is already in the air and then inside this if statement create another if statement stating if air time count is greater than zero then we want rb.velocity dot up equal to vector2 dot up multiplied by jump speed we want to also set our air time count to minus equal time dot delta time so that it starts counting down. We're also quickly going to add an else to our if statement setting in air equal to false. Lastly we're going to create one more if statement so that when the player releases the space bar in air is set to false. So our player stops jumping. Head back over to Unity so that we can fill in some values. So I'm going to head over to our player game object and I'm going to give move speed a value of around 5. You can change this if you want your player moving faster or slower. I'm going to create an empty game object and call it player pose and give it a little green gizmo so that I can see it in the scene window. Adjust our player pose game object so that it sits at the bottom of our player's collider and then drag the player pose game object under the player so it's a child of the player. Next I'm going to drag the player pose game object into our player pose transform slot on the player movement script. And I'm going to have jump speed a value of 10 and our position radius something like 0.4. Set your air time to something low like 0 0.15 and then we're going to head to our ground game object and add a new layer. Call it whatever you want but I'm going to call mine ground and then we need to assign our ground game object to the layer ground. Head back to our player and select ground as ground. Save this and hit play to test our game. So you'll see that now our player can move left and right and jump. But we've got a couple problems. The first problem is our player's floating, and the second problem is that when we move left and right, the player's sprite doesn't flip to face that way. The first problem is an easy fix. All you need to do is go to your player's rigid body and up the gravity scale a little. Keep changing and testing until you find something that you like. I'm pretty happy with this one. The second problem to fix the flipping isn't too hard to fix either. So you want to start by creating a private sprite renderer, and I'm going to call this SR. And then you want to head to the start function, and just copy the line of code that we used to get our rigid body component, but change it to SR and sprite renderer. This will get our player's sprite renderer component. Then we're going to go to our update function, and create a new if statement, typing if move input is greater than zero. And then inside, sr.flipx equals false. Then you want to create an else if move input is less than zero. And then sr.flipx equals true. This should solve our player's flipping problem and he should flip to face the way. We can test this in Unity and yep, it works. That's the end of this first video. We've got a fully moving player. It can jump and move left and right and flip to face the right way. Hope you enjoyed this first video of the 2D platformer controller series. If you have any problems, make sure you leave a comment below and I'll help by replying. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because when I reach a thousand subscribers, I'll be releasing an online multiplayer tutorial series with over 30 episodes. Also hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I release the next episode of this series. Thanks for watching, guys.